this video we demonstrate how to do deterministic detrending with a level shift and a broken trend and oxmetrics. Assume we have a variable yt which looks something like this. So this could be a case where we have a linear trend and we have a level shift at some point in time which we could denote c0 and then we have a new trend afterwards. So this is a process with a level shift and a broken trend with the break occurring exactly at c0. Assume that we have observed yt which is given by where yt tilde is a mean zero stationary process given by next we have a constant term and we have a linear trend and then we have the broken trend component and the level shift so first, this is our broken trend and our level shift. So DTL is what we call a shift dummy. So it takes on value 0, 4, t equal 1, 2, all the way up to t0. And then it jumps to 1, 4, t equal to t0 plus 1, all the way up to the end of the sample. Second, dt t, which is our broken trend, is equal to zero. T equal one, two, all the way to t zero. And then it is t minus t zero for t equal zero plus one, all the way up to capital T. So the first one will take on value zero and then jump and then take on values one. The second will start take on those zeros and then it will create a trend starting exactly at this point in time t0. So now what we want to do is we want to detrend the observed val uh, variable yt and simply extract the mean zero stationary process given by yt tilde. We will show how to do that in Oxmetrics. A short disclaimer, this is just an example to illustrate how to do it so it might not be the best possible thing to do for the data that we will look at. That's the first thing. Second, we will treat the timing of the break, the timing t0, as something that we know. So we will not do any test in terms of the timing, we will just assume that we know it. This is the variable we will use to illustrate how to do this. This is the Danish bond rate over a period from the 70s up to 2004. And we will assume that we know that there's a break occurring at 83 first quarter around here. And we want to add both a level shift and a broken trend exactly in this period. So the first thing we do is create the new variables. We need to create a level shift and a broken trend. First level shift 83.1. Create that by using the function dummy. Specify the first date 83.1. And then the last date, 2003-4, and by a semicolon. And then we will add a broken trend, 83-1. And we simply compute that by accumulating the level shift. And with semicolon, click Run. And now the data set has these two new variables. See that the level shift takes on value 0, then start at 83-1 we have once. The broken trend is just accumulated level shift and there we have this broken trend starting at 83.1. We can plot them. Level shift to broken trend separately and this is exactly what the variables look like. So now let's first specify a model in PCGIF, single equation dynamic modeling, where we try to take out just a linear trend without any breaks. So we model R, we include a constant and we add a trend and we just try to 
run this regression, select the entire sample, click OK, and this is what we get. So this is a nice illustration of the deterministic. The fitted blue line is simply the constant term and then the trend. So the problem is here that we have a period here in the beginning up until 83 where it seems like we have an upward trend and then we have a period where it seems like we have a negative trend but here we've not included a broken trend so we have the same trend over the same whole period and you can see that it's negative and this seems like a strange way of modeling the variable. So instead we could allow for a broken trend, do that here, go back to the model, we have the constant and the trend, and now we add our broken trend variable. Without lags, like this, we estimate it with the full sample, and we go back to the graph here. Now we can see that we get the following. This looks better than before, but it still seems like the trend in the first period is not really capturing what we wanted to do. It seems like we have a level shift around here, so we want to include that as well. That we can do, simply go back to the formulate window, add a level shift, add a broken trend, and that's going to give us the following. Now this is exactly what we wanted to achieve. We have a positive trend in the first part, we have a level shift, and then we have a negative trend in the last period. Note that the detrended variable is actually the uh, residuals. Here we see a plot of the scale residuals. Double click, instead of an index line, just select the line. And there we have a plot of the detrended variable where we have taken out broken deterministic trend and the level shift. To save those series, you go to the test menu, you click store residuals and database, and you select the residuals. And we could call this new variable rdtrended, like this. And we could now do a plot of the detrended variable, and it would give us exactly this graph. So this is now the detrended variable. This is how we do the deterministic detrending. But just note that this might not be the best possible way of doing it for those data. This was just an illustration of how to do it. So thanks for watching.